Matt Towery of Insider's Advantage. Matt, I understand we've established contact with you there, yeah. uh, and we appreciate your time and your persistence. I guess you're joining us now by phone. Uh, the Washington Post ABC News poll that was just put out, the numbers don't look very good for the president, but it's a long way between now and November. What say you? Well, uh, this, you know, midterms are not good for presidents usually, although this president has consistently been trending down in the lower 40s in terms of approval rating. Occasionally, he'll bump up, uh, but then come back down to the mid to lower 40 percentile level, and that's not good. I don't think there are many Democrats around the country who feel like that he's going to be a big help to any effort they make either to be reelected or, more importantly, to capture open seats. Uh, this is a problematic situation because this is not just a matter of popularity. It's a matter of you can take across the board foreign policy. His approval ratings are bad there. As far as the economy goes, approval ratings aren't good there. Implementation of the Obamacare or Affordable Care Act, they're not there either. Very low approval ratings. So across the board, he doesn't have a strong suit that he can rely on and say, look, I, but I'm really doing well here. There's just nothing in this polling uh, set of numbers in the ABC poll. And I might also add in the Gallup poll, which I sort of look to as the gold standard of how we um, look at polling for presidential approval. They've been doing it the longest. And it virtually matches the ABC poll. So we know those numbers that we see in the ABC uh, Washington Post poll are pretty much accurate. So, again, his approval rating, just 41% approve, 52% disapprove. Matt, during my days as a candidate, I guess my approval fell as low as 43% in my first term. I was able to come back and win an election. But, again, Mr. Obama is not on the ballot. But for all intents and purposes, does a midterm election essentially serve as a referendum on a president's performance in office? Well, I think this is an unusual set of circumstances because, as you alluded to, you know, you had low approval ratings but bounced back. This president really is not about bouncing back. Now, he may become very concerned about holding on to the U.S. Senate at some point, but it may be too late. What we have here is we have a president, unlike most presidents, if you look at presidents that are usually unpopular at this point, but look at the reasons. Jimmy Carter had uh, the situation in Iran. That's why he was had such bad uh, approval ratings towards the end of his term. Um, when you looked at uh, George W. Bush, he obviously had gotten involved in several wars. Uh, they became sort of unpopular. The economy began to slip at the end. His numbers were bad. Uh, those who bounce back are people like Bill Clinton, who sort of take matters into their own hands and decide that they're going to work with where the American people and their, their approval rating is going. This president is trying to go opposite a center nation. We're a center slightly to the right nation still, and he is more left of center, and in many instances, extremely left of center, and he's not even getting the support of people who normally would identify with left of center. Matt Towery, I did not see the specific numbers in this ABC News Washington Post poll, but there have been other studies done that, that um, reveal the, the universal unpopularity of Congress. Yet in this uh, Washington Post ABC News poll, it says that a majority of respondents want to see Republicans maintain control of Congress. Now, will the, will the disaffected, will the people upset with Congress, are those, those just the people who are going to stay away from voting in midterms? Do, do you discount the static and the dislike of Congress as an institution? Or is that still a concern, or should it be a concern, for people like Speaker Boehner, quoted in the Wall Street Journal the other day as hell-bent on passing, a, quote, immigration reform, which many of us regard as amnesty? Well, first, with respect to Boehner, yes, he said that. And as you know, he's done the Texas two-step, even though he's from Ohio, backwards very quickly because he realized he was about to lose any chance of, of leading his, his conference next go-around. So I don't think we're going to see that happen now. Uh, but the unpopularity of Congress, we've seen that for many, many years now. It's been a long time since we've seen a majority of Americans, or even a plurality, approve of Congress's uh, job. It doesn't really affect, certainly, the House, because the House is marginal. These are gerrymandered seats, as we know. And, you know, incumbents 90-plus percent of the time are going to win re-election. The ones that are marginal this year appear to be drifting more towards Republicans. I mean, the general thought, at least in 
in D.C. and really outside of D.C. among pollsters and consultants is that the Republicans might pick up some seats on the House side. Where it really matters is on the Senate side, and we do have some incumbent, anti-incumbent feelings going right now, particularly in the South, where you have some of these incumbents, uh, such as in North Carolina or in Arkansas, who don't seem to be quite in line with the more centrist to right um, uh, sort of political philosophy of the folks who live in those areas. So I do think you can look at those numbers and sort of impute them and look at them a bit with the U.S. Senate races because you got a larger area where public opinion really matters. When you're talking about the House of Representatives, I don't think it means very much. Well, you were kind enough to join us last week to talk about a couple of those Senate races. There's one in particular with the primary, what, I guess about 20 some odd days away in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, the Senate Republican leader, Mitch McConnell versus Tea Party favorite, Matt Bevin. When you take a look at that, and I guess, Matt, we call this bonus analysis. <laughs> what's your take in the bluegrass state right now for McConnell? Well, there hasn't been a great deal of polling done. Uh, if you look at real clear politics, uh, for whatever reason, Kentucky is rarely polled. Uh, the last polls that we had uh, showed McConnell way ahead. And I will say the Tea Party as, as, a, as a movement is different this year than it was in 2010. You don't have this massive collection of people on the mall waving flags, and really their influence is waning as an organization. But the conservative philosophy is still there. I think McConnell probably takes the nomination, uh, but I think you're going to see uh, it be a little bit closer than expected. And uh, then, of course, he's got a major challenger to deal with uh, when he gets into November. But right now, my guess is McConnell slips by, but you know he's he's not uh, he's really changed his ways in the last few years. Uh, Mitch McConnell has drifted much more to the conservative side because he realized that if he didn't, he wouldn't be there next time. Matt Towery, we'll have to end it there. We always appre appreciate your assessment of politics, and we'd like to get your thoughts on this via social media. Why don't you let us know where you stand? Uh, by tweeting us at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum.